Step into the magic lamp of television history with a classic sitcom that captured hearts in 1965. The enchanting tale of a genie and her unsuspecting master took living rooms by storm, delivering a blend of humor and fantasy that left viewers eagerly tuning in week after week. Curious about the show's behind-the-scenes secrets? Brace yourself, as there are plenty of funny, shocking, and even sad facts about the making of this iconic series. But don't touch that remote just yet, we've got the scoop on everything you need to know. Now, let's pose a question. Can you recall a personal story where this TV series left an indelible mark on your life? Perhaps it inspired a laughter-filled family night or sparked an enduring love for sitcoms. We'd love to hear your tales. What makes this show a timeless symbol of the industry? Dive into its enduring qualities that continue to resonate with audiences today. The answers might surprise you. Before you go, share your most cherished memory or personal experience related to the show in the comments below. Your stories are the real gems of this magical journey. Get ready for a trip down memory lane with I Dream of Genie, where laughter meets fantasy, and every episode is a timeless wish granted. Step into the charming world of a classic sitcom from 1965 that won the hearts of many with its mix of humor and fantasy. Imagine a magical TV show that brought a genie and her unsuspecting master into people's living rooms, creating lots of laughter and entertainment. The show not only set a milestone in sitcoms, but also became a timeless symbol in the TV industry. In the busy world of 1960s television, I Dream of Genie stood out as a great example of creativity. The show's importance lies not just in its funny moments, but also in its ability to transport viewers to a world where wishes come true, adding a touch of magic to everyday life. What makes this sitcom special is its lasting qualities that still connect with audiences today. As we take a trip down memory lane, explore the interesting stories behind the scenes that include funny, surprising, and even sad facts about the making of this well-loved series. From the entertaining performances to the well-crafted characters, each episode feels like a cherished memory, leaving a lasting impression on those who watched. Have you ever been inspired by a fun family night or discovered a new love for sitcoms through this classic show? Share your stories in the comments below, as your experiences are the real treasures of this magical journey. I Dream of Genie is a reminder of TV's versatility, where laughter meets fantasy, and each episode is a timeless wish granted. Step into Tony Nelson's world, where he's an Air Force officer with impressive achievements like the Airman's Medal, Air Force Commendation Medal, Air Force Outstanding Unit Ribbon, Korean Service Medal, and the Air Force Longevity Service Ribbon. These awards highlight Tony's dedication and service to his country, bringing a touch of reality to the magical setting of I Dream of Genie. The Nelson home, located on the Columbia Pictures back lot known as the Columbia Ranch in Burbank, sits on Blondie Street, a curved road that not only houses the Nelson residence, but also the exterior of the Bellows House from Bewitched. Occasionally, you might catch a glimpse of both houses in the same frame, unintentionally creating an interesting visual backdrop for the show. In the episode titled Mrs. Jin Jin, there's a rebellious moment when Barbara Eden's belly button makes a brief appearance, challenging the censorship norms of the 1960s television. This small act hints at the changing landscape of TV during that time. As we explore the world of I Dream of Genie, we discover the details of Tony's military background and the clever use of the Columbia Ranch set, showcasing the careful planning that went into creating the show's atmosphere. The mix of reality and fantasy in each episode continues to charm audiences, turning each moment into a timeless wish fulfilled. In the magical world of I Dream of Genie, the on-screen chemistry between Hayden Rourke and Emmeline Henry, who played Doctor and Mrs. Webbellows, showcased their acting skills. Despite an 18-year age difference in real life, their portrayal of the ideal married couple received repeated praise. Interestingly, both Rourke and Henry, in their personal lives, identified as gay, a fact not explored in the show's storyline. With the passing of Bill Daly in 2018, Barbara Eden stands as the only surviving regular cast member. Her continued presence connects to the show's past, embodying the fond memories that fans cherish. Notably, I Dream of Jeannie holds a unique place in television history as the last black and white series broadcast on NBC. The switch from black and white to color was marked by the NBC peacock, displaying its feathers, signifying the transition to color. This moment was a significant milestone in the evolution of television, capturing the changing way stories were visually told. 
Interestingly, the series challenged norms with subtle acts of rebellion, like Barbara Eden's brief belly button appearance in the episode titled Mrs. Jin Jin. This moment pushed against the censorship standards of the 1960s, reflecting the evolving landscape of television during that era. As we explore the world of I Dream of Jeannie, we uncover the careful planning behind the scenes. Tony Nelson's military background, portrayed with various awards, adds a touch of realism to the fantastical setting. The Columbia Ranch set, housing the Nelson residence, and the Bellows House from Bewitched unintentionally provides an interesting visual backdrop for the show. Each episode, blending reality and fantasy, continues to captivate audiences, turning moments into timeless wishes fulfilled. Reflecting on the show's unique aspects, from the on-screen chemistry of its cast to its crucial role in television history, I Dream of Jeannie remains a classic that transcends time. Larry Hagman's challenging behavior on set led producers to consider replacing him with Darren McGavin as a top choice. A storyline was even crafted where Tony loses Jeannie and McGavin finds her. However, studio executives favored Hagman despite producer concerns. Beyond Barbara Eden's famous naval censorship, additional rules shaped the show. An extra layer was added to Jeannie's costume to prevent seeing through it, and scenes of Tony and Jeannie alone in the bedroom required one or both characters to leave. Jeannie's disappearance had to be accompanied by visible smoke, and her bottle was strictly prohibited in Tony's room to avoid any implication of impropriety. An episode featuring Tony and Roger training a chimp named Sam was perceived as a jab at Bewitched, possibly in response to accusations of idea theft. This subtle rivalry highlighted the competitive nature between the two popular 1960s sitcoms. The show's meticulous adherence to censorship norms ensured nothing improper between the characters was implied, even subtly. These regulations played a crucial role in maintaining the innocence and charm of I Dream of Jeannie throughout its run. In the initial stages of I Dream of Jeannie, actor Don Dubbins, initially cast as Tony's buddy Pete Conway, faced replacement due to Bill Daly's superior comedic skills observed during the pilot. Despite Daly's limited prior acting experience and struggles with dyslexia, he adapted to his expanded role as the series progressed. Screenwriter Sidney Sheldon drew inspiration from the comedy film The Brass Bottle for the show's concept. Starring Tony Randall, the film centered around a man inadvertently causing chaos by releasing a male genie, played by Barbara Eden, who also later starred as Genie in the TV series. A few early color episodes showcased Genie in a green harem outfit and with black hair distinct from her usual pink attire. These elements later became trademarks of Genie's sister, featuring a contrasting personality. 